Well, I have a very tiny arrow here, so I will try to point at this very tiny arrow when we go. Now, hello, everybody. Hello. Yes. And welcome, welcome to EuroPython 2023. And this is the 22nd of EuroPython. So many people here, I hope, are actually the first time in EuroPython. And I thought perhaps we can talk about what is EuroPython. Well, the EuroPython conference series are organized by the EuroPython Society, and we are a team of passionate volunteers. And we are very proud to be the oldest and longest running volunteer-led Python conference in the entire world. Yes. <laughs> and you might say, the oldest, how old exactly? Well, here's a sneaky peek of how it looked like in 2002. And then in 2012, 2020, and now. So with our long history, EuroPython is a treasure trove of knowledge, and this is a testament of how Python has evolved. And this is also a love letter to our community. So just like the Python language, EuroPython is always evolving, striving to reflect the ever-evolving spirit of our community. So our conference is built by an incredible group of volunteers from diverse backgrounds, cultures, and interests. And we're all united by our passion for our community. We celebrate our differences, and we embrace them with open arms. No matter where you find yourself, no matter where you come from, whether you're experienced or you just started, whether you're a student, a professional enthusiast, whether you are local or you come far from across the globe, where you're looking to network or just soaking up new knowledge, um, whether you're shy or you're outgoing, you're feeling like a superstar or an imposter or both, you are in the right place. So get settled and get comfy. So, what have we actually prepared for you for EuroPython 2023? Now, after two incredible tutorial days, we're entering the main conference days. And that will be followed by the sprint weekend. The main conference days will feature about 140 talks. At the end of most talks, there will be five minutes of Q&A, and that will be open to both in-person and remote participants. Um, some speakers might not do a Q live Q&A, but you're very welcome to catch them in the hallway. I thought this might be also a good opportunity to remind people what is a question. Well, a question is not a comment. A question is a chance to clarify something that you didn't quite catch. Uh, it's a chance to ask for more details. Um, so if you want a more in-depth discussion with the speakers, you're very, very welcome to do so in the hallway track. And another place for in-depth discussions is in the open space, and that is located in the south rooms 221 and 222. We will have a post-it board at the registration area for visibility, so you can go there and propose a topic and have a wonderful discussions with like-minded people. So the open space is reserved for a few other sessions. So on Thursday morning, there are three back-to-back -back community sessions. If you're interested in how the EuroPython Society is organized and run, you're welcome to join the Open EPS session. And if you are a Python community organizer, you're also welcome to join afterwards to share your experiences and knowledge. And at the end, there will be a PSF session presented by Deb Nicholson, from, um, who is the executive director of PSF. 
And on Thursday afternoon, the open space is also reserved for an hour um, to have an on-conference discussion about the Cyber Resilience Act. That is followed by the panel discussion at the forum hall here. Um, so on Friday morning, there will be a mentor sprint in the open space. Um, we, this is a really good opportunity to show new beginners the ropes of how to sprint and how to use Git and the open source contribution workflow. So this year's participating uh, projects have scikit-learn, beware, PyScript, and Mu. And after the main conference days, we will have the sprint weekend. And this year, uh, the sprint will not happen in the same building, so don't come here during the weekend. And the, the sprint will happen in Reichka Zizhkov campus at Vichy campus, which is the uh, Prague University of Economics and Business. So you're very welcome to already propose a sprint. If you haven't, you can open a pull request on our website. And of course, you, can, you do not have to register another ticket. Your in-person ticket already includes the sprints. So just come by and join any sprint project that you like. And apart from the main event and the main program, this year we also have a full packed event. So if you are a community organizer, you're very welcome to join us on Thursday on the same level for lunch. It would be on, in the Congress Hall Foyer 2C. You will know where it is when you see it. Um, and then on Friday, we will dedicate the entire day to Pi Ladies. So if you're a Pi Lady on Friday lunch, um, you're welcome to join us in the same area. And then uh, on Friday evening, you're welcome to join us uh, for Pi Lady Social at this venue very close here. It's about five, 10 minutes of walk. In the same place tonight, if you have time, please join us in the, uh, for the Prague Pivot. This is a Prague community meetup. Uh, it would just be very chilled and grill and let's connect there. And of course, there is the EuroPython official social event on Thursday. Um, the content and the program of the social event has already been on our website for a while, but I know that everybody is looking for when the ticket sales would open. Well, it is right after Petra's keynote talk. Um, so this year, we will have 200 tickets available. Uh, so right after Petra's talk, uh, you can go to our ticket shop and buy them. Um, the ticket price for this year's social event would be 22 euros. Uh, the ticket holders will be given a blue wrist wristband at some point. You will get an email and know how to collect them. And also, we have a video game tournament this year. So this is a video game designed to be played by a small Python program. And you're welcome to each submit a bot that will play this game. And at the end of the conference, we will have a tournament session in the open space on Friday afternoon. So this game is designed by Neil, who will be giving you a lightning talk later on to introduce you with more details. But you can already use this uh, QR code to, to, to check out the instructions and get started and also see you at the tournament, of course. And many of you probably have already joined our Discord uh, community. If you haven't, please do so, because this is a really great opportunity to ask more questions after the talk to speakers. And also, you can follow the announcement and get help from the organizers. Um, of course, it's also a very good way to extend the hallway track to find people who are interested in the same things um, and also, of course, coordinate get-togethers and lunch plans and dinner. Well, we cover lunch, so eat here, but dinner plans we don't cover, so please use Discord to coordinate and have a good time.
this is a good opportunity to applaud because we're going to talk about code of conduct. Um, but this is something very important, of course, when people get together, we need to agree on how we behave towards each other. So you all have agreed to our code of conduct when you brought your tickets. And if you see something or experience something that you feel uncomfortable with, or you think that might be a COC violation, please let us know. And this also includes the Discord discussions because we want to make every feel, everyone feel safe in every EuroPython related environment. And if you, you can find the full list of contact information on our website. Um, so if you email coc at europython.eu, this will go to every single COC committee member. But if you want to reach out to a specific COC committee member, you can go to our website and check out everyone's uh, contact, contact details. And now, I would really like to take the opportunity to thank all of our sponsors. We have so many sponsors who have been supporting us for a long time, and some as long as a decade. So this year, we also have a few new supporters. I, I want to say every sponsor, you are part of our community. And without you, this conference would have been less affordable and less fun. So please give a round of applause to all of our sponsors. Um, yes. And right outside, there is the exhibit hall, so please visit their booth and talk to them and find out the wonderful things that they are doing. And apart from the main booth, this year we have quite a few open source community tables in the same area in the exhibit hall. So we are inviting the Czech Python community, the Python Software Foundation, Django Software Foundation, Python APAC, NumFocus, Python Sports Project, Pritix, and Visu. And you will go there and you, you will meet all of them and talk about the wonderful projects and community work they do. And so finally, what is EuroPython? Well, EuroPython is it's for you. And to help you feel more comfortable, we have several different facilities prepared. Um, so we have the social distancing stickers, so, 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 so you can indicate your comfort level of physical contact. We also have the pronoun stickers for you to grab. Um, there is, of course, the quiet room if you need peace and low stimulus. The quiet room is located in South Room 223 and 224. Um, please keep the so the back of the room has its curtain pulled down. That's on purpose to reduce the stimulus. So please do not pull the curtain up at the back. If you need more light in the quiet room, just use the front area because that has the curtains pulled up. Um, also, this year we have welcomed many, ch many small children in our childcare rooms 247 and 248. You will probably pass them by when you walk around, and please say hello and don't step on them. Because um, <laughs> they're crawling in the hallway, so be careful. Um, but the nannies will take care of it as well. Um, we also have sanitary products uh, in the toilet, so take whatever you need and do remind us when they run out. And lastly, I want to remind people that we, everyone, please be compassionate and do not make assumptions too quickly. If people appear to be rude, for example, because they don't adhere to any specific social convention, because they don't exchange eye contact, for example. Always consider that there might be another possibility. Give them a chance to know them, and don't jump into conclusions too fast. And lastly, the secret to having a lovely EuroPython when the main organizers do not know much about the local community and culture is to have local pie ladies. So very soon, I'm going to pass the floor to a local pie lady, Mia, to welcome you to Prague. And I am Raquel. I'm the chair of EuroPython Society. And I'm a socially awkward Asian neurodivergent female. So 
<laughs> Let's make this conference for you. Let's make this conference for me and for everybody here. So I hope you will feel welcome and be yourself and enjoy the conference. Thank you. And now, let's welcome Mia to welcome you to Prague. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I, <laughs> I am Mia. I moved to Prague seven years ago, and I immediately fell in love with it. It is my pleasure to welcome you to our beautiful city right at the beginning of our conference. I hope you will fall in love with the city as much as I have. Prague, known as the city of a hundred spires, is one of the most visited cities in Europe as it showcases a remarkable range of architectural styles, including Gothic, Renaissance, Baroque, and Art Nouveau. It is worth noting that the city has around a thousand towers painting an impressive skyline. As you stand on one of Prague's picturesque bridges, the Charles Bridge, witness the lively rhythm of the city intersecting with the quiet flow of the river Vltava. Just like Smetana's symphonic poem, also named Vltava, the river flows with inspiration, both musically and visually, for locals and visitors alike. Prague is a vibrant hub of arts and culture, offering a wide range of artistic experiences for visitors to explore and enjoy. Discover world-class museums like the National Gallery and the Dock Center for Contemporary Art, be enchanted by performances at the Prague State Opera and the National Theater, or uncover the hidden world of underground art in neighborhoods like Zhishkov or Holashovice, adding an alternative touch to Prague's artistic scene. Grab a, grab a coffee at the House of the Black Madonna, a masterpiece of Cubist architecture in Prague, the city that squarely hosts an impressive 90% of all Cubist architecture in the whole world. Come with me up to hill to Vyshehrad, the ancient fortress located just a few hundred meters from this venue. Take the opportunity to taste Czech Pilsner beer, sit back and watch the sunset behind the Prague castle while reading a famous novel by Čapek, where you can find the first mention of the word robot. I am a proud member of the Czech Python community. I co-organize Prague Python meetups and PyCon CZ. In the Czech Republic, there happens to be a large Python community that loves to get together. Therefore, we have many events where people meet and exchange their ideas. The beginnings of the Czech Python community date back to the year 2002. However, the first meetup started in 2011 in Prague and Brno, when a lot of fans of Python started gathering at Ruby on Rails meetups, and they decided to found ones for Python. The biggest motivation, except for people wanting to spend some time together, was EuroPython. For EuroPython to happen in Prague, there would have to be a local community. So people started gathering in hope that one day we will be able to host such a wonderful conference like this one. In the meantime, Python meetups spread to other cities, and nowadays we have meetups in six cities across the country. And today, after 12 long years of waiting, we have EuroPython in Prague. <laughs> Two years after the first meetups in 2013, a group of individuals decided to spread knowledge and make our community more diverse, and so Czech Pi Ladies was founded. Nowadays, there are PyLadies courses running in six cities across the country, ranging from beginner to intermediate ones. In addition, there are bi-weekly Pi working sessions for those that need help with a project and for those who would like to help beginners with their assignments. As a result, nowadays we have more than one-fifth of women attending our PyCon conferences, and though we still have a way to go. 
Two out of five members of our nonprofit's board are women, and this year, for the first time in history, we have the majority of women organizing PyCon. <laughs> But, most importantly, we are making the IT world more accessible. Through teaching, we are empowering others not only to expand their knowledge, but also to develop a passion for the world of computers. Two years after the first Pi Ladies, this community gathered together and, de and decided to organize a conference to spread knowledge and welcome more people on board. Our first PyCon happened in 2015, following other PyCons in 2016, 17, 18, 19, and with another one coming this September. 